So we've got um, Zach here, who's going to be doing a, a mock test with me today. And you've not driven this car before, have you? Apart from about the last half an hour or so, just driving, yeah. driving round. And also, you haven't driven in this area before. No, not in this area. No. no. So, but you have done like a test in the past and done various lessons and that sort of thing. Yeah. And it went quite smoothly on the drive here and a bit of a drive round. So. Yeah. So. Be nice to him in the comments. Bear in mind, he's not driven this car before, and he doesn't know this this area. So, yeah. just like a learning exercise, really, just to see if we can identify any areas. And just useful for people watching as well. Hopefully, At least I can watch it back as well and see. What yeah, that's the real yeah. reason. That's what they want to take as a positive thing, not as a negative yeah. thing. And then end up in a video saying, "Oh, this person got a 12 mind serious faults." So it's not. It's more about a learning thing to help help you and others. Might go viral. <laughs> yeah. So, um, the test is going to last about 40 minutes, just you know. You include one reversing manoeuvre, yep. possibly an emergency stop, mm -hmm. and about 20 minutes of independent driving, which today is going to be following the sat-nav. Okay. Um, at all times, if you could please follow the road ahead, mm -hmm. unless road signs or road markings direct you otherwise. Okay. Um, we're also going to do two safety questions, one tell me, one show me. Yep. And we're going to just do one more parked up here, see if you know. Um, can you can you tell me how you would know if there's a problem with the anti-lock braking system, the ABS? The ABS light will come up on the dashboard. Yep, that's it, cool. Okay. And we'll also do one on the move, a demonstration. If you're not too sure about that, don't worry too much, because of course I know you don't know this I car, don't know but we 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 see how it goes. Yeah. Um, if you're not sure, don't do it. Don't what, try and find it and then yeah. lose control of the car. Of course, in a real test, you would know the car, so you wouldn't have that issue. Yeah. This examiner changes the car, <laughs> yeah. which happened to me. <laughs> so, your structure, you mean, yeah? That's so, starter, yeah. Yeah. So, um, we're head off when you're ready. So, if you start yeah. up the engine, then we're head off when you're ready, and then we're following the sat nav. Um, from the start. Now, sorry, it's going to take you into the test centre to start with. Just ignore yeah, that. Ignore it, just carry on past it. the test centre, and then it should reroute, hopefully. Okay. If not, hopefully, I'll step yeah. in. Yeah. So, drive on whenever you're ready, please. Okay. <clears throat> Some great awareness and observations here. As Zach firstly realises the road is a 50 mile an hour road, so we need to be very careful in judging the gaps as the car is becoming very fast. He also checks his mirrors and his blind spots extremely well. So it's clear it's a bit hard to tell this right? So remember to ignore the satnav's instruction. I'm just going to level the camera, it doesn't look very straight. So that's trying to fail me. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to say. I think I've actually got the sound off, so I don't think it will. That's good. So I'm going to put the sound back on, though, because that's going to be useful soon. So, to ignore it, it says psych here. And if it doesn't tell you in time, at the roundabout, it's going to be turning right. Yep. Full effect, so it's doing right a U turn. Okay. At the end of the road, turn right. After 100 yards, go around the roundabout and take the fourth exit. You will arrive at your destination at 1.26p. Go around the roundabout and take the fourth exit, Brighton Road. Very sensitive, the first gear in yes. this car, isn't it? Very sensitive. <laughs> this is the petrol cars. If, if people watching, this is what it's like in petrol cars. Diesel cars don't feel like this. If this was diesel, it wouldn't have done that. Because people in the comments will probably be complaining. He's had always over revenue. You're going to mark him down for that. I'm not going to mark you down for over revenue. That's not, that's not an issue, a major issue. It's that. a different type of car. It's just a different type of car. It's just something to get used to. Even sometimes I've rev this car a bit. It's, it's very sensitive, this petrol car is. Yeah. My diesel car I never over revved. Not yeah. the embarrassing thing as well is. Yeah. I've stalled this car a few times. I've I never stalled the diesel car. Yeah. I'll give a minor fault here for steering. As Zach steers to the left fairly aggressively, as we're going at 40 miles an hour, this could potentially be quite dangerous as it could unsettle the car. I 
give a mind thought here for awareness and planning, as it feels like Zack sees the roundabout quite late. As he brakes quite late, chain skiers a bit late, and also looks right quite late. After 400 yards, go left on the roundabout and take the first exit, Brighton Road. The problem with this roundabout is it's a bit hidden around the corner. So we need to be braking on approach to the corner, and many people forget to do this. But there are plenty of clues to tell you the roundabout is immediately after the corner. We can firstly see the road sign on the left. When we see this sign, we check on our mirrors, signalling, and starting to slow to prepare for the roundabout. By looking through the corner, we can see the cones or bollards indicating exactly where the roundabout is. We can also see the sat-nav tells us the roundabout is 100 yards away, so we really should be doing mirrors, signal and start braking at this point. Go left on the roundabout and take the first exit. An eco-safe driving fault here for control, as Zack stays in 4th gear down this road, doing about 45 miles an hour, he could have quite happily got into gear 5 as it's a straight bit of road. By staying in gear 4 at this speed, you're using more fuel than you would be if you're in gear 5. Great use of his mirrors before he slows down for the 30 mile an hour speed limit here. It's just a routine stop. You're probably used to when you did your tests before. Mm -hmm. They do it just several times on different types of roads. So, for example, it might be on a busy road, yeah. it might be on a hill, it might be behind a parked car, just different situations yeah. to show you can stop and start in different situations. Yeah. So, um, okay, thank you, and drive on when you're ready. I thought again there's some really good awareness of his mirrors, waiting patiently for a safe gap, and I have a final check of his blind spot just before he pulls away. As Zach states, you definitely don't want to be doing 60 around these corners. Remember the speed limit is not a target, it's just a limit to so the maximum you're allowed to go if it's safe to. Now Zach is staying in third gear at the moment, which is a bit of a low gear for his speed, about 40 miles per hour. But given how bendy the road is, it's quite acceptable and often a good idea as it gives you more control. We 
now see the road has straightened out. The bends are now very minor, not sharp at all. However, Zach stays in gear 3, he should be changing up the gears as the road is straightened out. His speed, however, is good, doing about 45 to 50 miles per hour, but just not in the correct gear. Minor fault is given for positioning normal driving, as when coming down this country road, Zach is always quite close to the left, quite near the bushes. In fact, at one point, he brushes the bushes slightly. If it was even closer to the left, it would have most definitely been a serious fault, but he's just about okay, just very, very close to the left. see the road straightened out. Zach builds his speed well, getting to near 50 miles per hour, but doesn't change up to gear 5, which he should be doing, he just stays in gear 4. I decide not to mark this down on this occasion. Turned him 
Now they're going to be turning left quite soon into the car park. Soon, I'm hoping the car park's open, otherwise I'm a bit screwed. Yeah. <laughs> We're then going to turn left into the car park just here. Yes. It's going quite slow, just want to make sure it's definitely okay to do it because like, it's not actually what I expect it to be. Open for business, okay. So if we just go down to that bit of the car park, that bit of the car park, yeah, yeah. And then could you just drive forwards into any space? You use one here or go around there, it doesn't really matter. Just so drive forwards, right. either one, your choice. Okay. Just drive forwards into a parking space. Zach has clearly been practicing his parking as he goes into his spay very well, keeping wide to the right for going for a space on the left side and then steering very rapidly at his point of turn. Do this end one. Okay. So I've got to go to stream. Call it extreme right. Left. Extreme left, I mean. Well, I'm going to straighten the car over there. It's right, isn't it? Um, it's up to you if you feel you need to correct it. It's, it's, it's up right, to yeah. you. I always correct it, so I'm 100% sure. Otherwise, it up on spotted cruelly for bad parking. <laughs> right, so. Make sure it's absolutely safe. Going up a hill as well. Yep. Tip my nose. Yep. I know I'm talking to myself, but. Oh, that's fine. It's not an insanity test. It's. It's not a sanity it's test, it's a driving test. I do talk to myself a lot, but the thing is it always ends in an argument. <laughs> That's never a good sign, is it? <laughs> no one let mirror help me, but I can't see, so I'll say about it, I'll do. <coughs> okay, you happy with your position? Yeah, have a look. Yeah, it's fine, have a check if you want. No, I'm in that line. Can't see the other line. Yeah, I'm in that, I think, yeah. Okay. So give me a second, I just want to check something. Just, okay. If you can switch the engine off for you, please, just because I have to legally have the engine off if I exit the vehicle. Okay. So I just need to go and just have a check. I get out to check because it feels like Zach has gone too far forwards. And when I get out of the car, he has gone too far forwards. His front bumper is overhanging the bay in front of him. But all four wheels are inside the lines, so he gets away with a minor okay. for control. And then what I'd like to do now is to reverse out of the space. Yep. Um, and when you reverse out, um, make sure you reverse towards the bushes. Towards the bushes, yeah. Um, because that's bringing it easier. So then we're basically going to back up towards the bushes. So we back can then go the forward came, to that yeah. way and back up the way we came. I think it's going to be easiest. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's just get the on. And then, so drive on when if you're ready, just back out of the space, going towards the bushes, back out towards the bushes. Okay. And then As you stated, we were coming out the way we came in, yeah. so, and just bear in mind when you turn here, do bear in mind it is a two-way road, so we're coming out of this exit, okay. and then turning right onto the main road, right onto the main but bear road. in mind it is a two-way road. Two-way road. Zach does then stall here, and doesn't realise he's stalled, so it takes a bit of time to realise and sort the problem out. Now normally, taking this long to recover from a stall could be a serious fault. But, as we're in a car park and there's no one behind us, we're not delaying anyone, so it's just a minor for move off control. My heel now. Car come in. There's you guys coming in here, so I'll give him a bit of space. I don't know, I can't advise. I just want to be self all the way. <laughs> yeah, 
and then we're going to tune to follow the sat nav. I don't know what we'll say here, but it's basically turning right at the end of the road, back onto the road we were on before. Well, I'm going to take a guess and go for this way, just because it will reroute me if I'm wrong anyway. So. Yeah, let's just turn right. Don't worry if it tries to our help if we did. Just turning right here. Notice the national speed limit sign on the left. This will be important to know about soon. Looking ahead, we'll soon see the road straightens out a lot and we can see ahead extremely far. So Zach should be building speed, getting to 60 miles per hour to make some progress. He should also be changing up his gears to gear five. However, he stays in gear three at about 45 to 50 miles per hour. Minor fault for hesitation, as Zach slows down too much into the roundabout and goes into first gear. He could have quite happily stayed in second gear and kept going. The car coming round the roundabout was not near enough to affect him. So it's just going ahead, it says second exit, it's, it's, it's the one ahead What's basically. The it's one ahead, yeah. the second exit. Basically, counting out as an exit, so it's just this yeah. one here we're taking. I'm revving it now because I'm not used to this car still. On the next roundabout, Zach needs to be looking at the road signs and the road markings more carefully. To notice, he should be using a middle lane for following the road ahead. This isn't a major problem as he gets in the left lane for left only and then turns left, which is perfectly fine. In the confusion, Zach forgets to change down gears and pulls away onto the roundabout in gear 3 and the car struggles a bit, so a minor is given for control gears. After 300 yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit, B2036, towards town centre. Great decision to turn left. If we would have tried to go ahead in the left only lane, it would have been very dangerous, confused other drivers, and been an instant fail. Okay, so I'll direct you from here, so just follow my instructions, ignore anything the sat nav says. Okay. So we've got a mini roundabout coming up soon. We're going to do a U turn. We wouldn't normally, but this one's quite a big mini roundabout, so it's quite possible to do it. Okay. And it's quite legal. So it's coming up fairly soon, you'll see the cones for it soon, so just pop your right Go signal on and slow right down so it's quite tight. Keep more to the left to give yourself more room to turn round, it's going to go all the way around it. Oh yeah. Yeah, so you you turn when you're whenever it's safe to do so. Going all the way around, get back to where we came from. Left for 
first exit. Their first exit. confusion on this roundabout as a sat nav has said cross the roundabout and take the second exit i think here zach has thought that meant go straight ahead but that is not correct cross the roundabout does not mean go straight ahead necessarily if we look at the road sign we can clearly see second exit is off to the right when zach gets a bit confused initially i stay quiet as zach needs to show me he can deal with the situation on his own but when he still looks a bit confused, I do step in to try to keep him on route. Due to the confusion, Zach comes to a stop at the roundabout when it's completely clear to the right. This is given as a serious fault for undue hesitation. Cross the roundabout and take the second exit. And he's to the right. To the right, yeah. yeah. Roundabouts are designed to keep traffic moving, so if you stop at a roundabout and there's nothing to give way to, it could be very dangerous and you could get hit from behind as there's traffic and not expecting you to stop. If this was a T-junction and Zach stopped and there's nothing coming, it may have just been a minor thought. The key with roundabouts is you must concentrate and plan ahead. Do not wait to get to the roundabout until you start looking. Look on approach to the roundabout to work out what lane you might need, what signal you might need, and to work out when it's safe to go, avoiding stopping where possible. After 300 yards, go left on the roundabout and take the first exit, Worth Road.
when the lights change here, personally, I would keep further back from the red car, as Zach has to go for a yellow box. And before you enter the yellow box, you want to be 100% sure you can clear it, so you don't get stuck. confusing direction for this junction. Okay. All I'd advise you to do is just get, get in the left lane the and stay in the, the left road, lane. Turn right, A2220, yep. Russell Way, then take the second left. So the left lane will just take you where you need to go. So much better here, checking mirrors and signal on approach, slowing down and scanning to the right and changing gears before reaching the giveaway lines, ready to keep going. You need to make sure you're planning like this on every single roundabout. So scanning to the right on approach to the roundabout, trying to keep the car moving. So yeah, sorry, the camera just um, turned itself off, it sometimes oh, right. does that randomly. Um, but just people watching, we've only been driving for about 10 seconds, and then we just yeah. pulled over because I need to take the sound of down anyway because that's the end of the independent drive. Okay. I will give you directions as normal now. Okay. A bit confusing on some roads that sat there sometimes, but it's alright. Okay. So we discussed all of the ends yep. about how we need to deal with that. Yep. So, okay, so thank you and drive on when you're ready, please. the 
taking a second exit on this next roundabout. Now you could signal here, you could not. Either way is fine. Zach decides to do no signal, which is perfectly fine. Now ask Zach to pull up on the left before the next parked vehicle, getting quite close to it, about a car length away from it. I spend a minute or so here trying to sort out my internal camera. It's a GoPro Hero 4, so it should work fine, but it seems to cut out every now and then. I've tried a new battery, but that doesn't have any effect. I'm not sure what else to try. Let me know any suggestions in the comments. And we're off. Great observations, signal on, and good control of the speed coming round the park vehicles. Looking ahead, we can see the speed limit changing down to 20 miles an hour and slow written on the road to encourage us to slow down to 20. But Zach slows down too much. He slows down to nearly 10 miles an hour to go over the speed bump, which is just way too slow. We should be going over most speed bumps at about 20 to 25 miles per hour. But of course, some bumps are bigger, some bumps are not as big. Bumps in car parks, you might need to go 5 miles an hour. Some bumps on the road you might be okay to do 30 miles per hour. With the next bump I advise Zach he doesn't need to brake. He's already going 20, which is already slow. So just stay at 20 and go over the bumps at 20 be perfectly fine. I discussed this at the end with Zach, and the issue is his instructor has told him to always brake for speed bumps. But it can't be as black and white as that. If you're already going at a slow enough speed, you do not need to brake anymore. Nice planning here, keeping the car moving, noticing the white one on the left is stopping and being confident to keep going. Watch that Range Rover on the left. Are they going to reverse out without checking? At the traffic lights, turn left.
Now in this next roundabout, Zach comments about the importance of checking the left mirror and left blind spot before moving to the left lane as there could be a bus there. And asks Zach to turn left, first exit. So as he said, he checks his left mirror very well, checks his left blind spot, and then moves across to the left lane. This is a sort of roundabout, you don't want to look right too early. You firstly need to move over to the left lane and then look to the right. So your observations to the right will be fairly late compared to most roundabouts. The problem is, if you look right too early, you might then not look to the left when you need to move to the left lane, which is going to be a big, big problem. And if you've watched my other videos, you'll see someone failed their test recently for not looking left before moving to the left lane. I give a minor here for overtaking. As Zach is approaching the traffic lights, they've just gone green, there's a big queue in the right lane, and he just steams along past all the cars, and any of them could move to the left lane at any moment. We have to consider the left lane is empty, so the cars in the right lane might move back to the left lane to try and make more progress. So we don't want to just steam along past all that traffic, as they could just pull out in front of us. Zach should have been approaching with a lot more caution, slowing, being ready to stop if someone pulls out in front of him. At the roundabout, follow the road ahead, second exit for Pease Pottage Services. Notice the 30 mile an hour speed limit change. Now the dash camera does cut out here, this is because Zach stalls as he tries to pull away. He's just not used to the petrol car and he doesn't rev it enough. Did you notice the other 30 mile per hour sign there? Unfortunately Zach didn't, he continues to build his speed and he goes above 30. Here's another 30 sign. This is given as a serious fault for use of speed. You can see his speed at the bottom of the camera. He gets up to nearly 35 miles per hour. At the roundabout, follow the road ahead, second exit. Zach slows into the roundabout well and scans to the right and keeps moving. But as he enters the roundabout, he doesn't steer left enough and he straight lines the roundabout, cutting across the right lane a bit. This is given as a minor fault for control steering. <laughs> 